is a beautiful Sunday morning. Yeah. Can you see the morning? Yes. yes it is beautiful. The Bible says from the rising of the sun yep. until the going down of the same. Yep. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. So we'd like to welcome you to International Christian Centre Mombasa this beautiful Sunday morning. Yeah. want to invite you to worship the Lord with us through song. We are going to be singing here on this side of your screen. And we encourage you to sing there yeah. on that side of your screen. Lift up hands. Yes. Clap your hands. Yes. Give a shout to the Lord. Yeah. Actually for those of you who have been shy to dance in church, <laughs> today is your opportunity. You worship the Lord with a dance yeah. in the comfort of your home. Yeah. But whatever we do today, let us worship the Lord. Amen. Let us uh, let praises rise yes. from our city, everywhere, simultaneously. Yes. You see, God is omnipresent. Yes. This is one of those times when we get to worship God. At the same time, from different places. Yes. I do not know if I look excited, but I tell you, this is one of the most exciting things that has ever happened to me. The world is worshipping God yes. at the same time yeah. from different places. Yeah. So let's lift up holy hands Amen. and magnify the name of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence in our midst. Yes. We thank you because today we get to experience your omnipresence. We are worshipping you here, but we know yes. that the world over, yes. there are people lifting up your name yes. all over the world. Yes. From the rising of the sun until it's going down, your name is to be praised. Yes. So Lord, we worship you today. Fill our homes with your presence. Yes. Fill our hearts with your presence. Yes. Let the creation now see yes. the revealing of the sons of God, Amen. even as they worship you. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I welcome you to worship together and lift the name of Jesus. For his deed is worthy of all our praises.
when we are at crossroads by your spirit you speak to us and you tell us to walk in a certain direction or way and so God help us to not be afraid as the church help us to not be afraid as human beings help us not be afraid because you created us for a purpose you know us, you are our good shepherd and you watch over us
That was a beautiful, beautiful time of worship, and uh, we really, really indeed uh, bless the Lord and praise the Lord. Thank you for being with us. And uh, if you're just joining us now, uh, my name is Edward Monene from International Christian Center, Mombasa. And uh, we are uh, right at the end of our worship time. We are getting into a time of giving now. And then in our, uh, just a moment, we'll get into uh, just the preaching of the Word of God and the sharing, uh, which we are, doing it, uh, we are doing creatively today uh, with several people just coming in to share some things. And so uh, allow me at this point to invite you uh, to go ahead and uh, give. Uh, here at ICC Mombasa, if you're in the nation of Kenya and you're following, watching with us, ICC Mombasa family, hi. <laughs> uh, you can be able to give through M-Pesa. Our uh, payable number is 488508. 488508, that's our, our payable number. You can be able to give using that. And for account, you write tithe or you write offering. And then you go ahead and uh, you put the amount of money that you're giving. I normally make a joke at ICC Mombasa uh, when we are meeting, uh, you know, live, uh, which we haven't done for a while. I'm missing you guys, wherever you are. Uh, I normally make a joke and say, can I, uh, can I tell you how much to put in, in the pin, uh, in the amount of money? But uh, uh, just go ahead, feel free. Uh, give, and as you do so, be faithful. That's something that we talk about often at ICC Mombasa because it's not about the amount of money that you're giving. It's about faithfulness. Are you faithful? Are you faithful to give unto the Lord? Are you faithful to be generous? Are you faithful to honor God with the resources that he gives to you? Are you faithful with your tithes and offerings? And so I invite you to go ahead and do that. And then you put the pin and you finish that uh, the same way you'd finish any other MPSA transaction. And so just reminding you one more time, our payable number is 488508. And uh, if you're outside the nation of Kenya, you can actually still be able to give through MPESA. Let me tell you how. If you go to uh, Google Play Store or if you go to the Apple Play Store, you can be able to get an app called World Remit. And uh, World Remit is an app that, uh, you know, their security is good. They have become trusted even by banks. And uh, uh, I'm not saying this to really, uh, uh, you know, sort of publicize them or anything like that. But it's because I know that you can be able to send money, you can be able to give your offering through that app. If you download it and uh, you can be able to use your Visa card, your MasterCard, American Express, or any other card that you normally use to make payments, you can be able to use that uh, to be able to transfer money from uh, your card, from your bank uh, to um, you know our number. I'll give it to you in just a moment. And uh, so you select uh, that you want to make a transfer, you select that the country that you want to send money to is Kenya, and then you select mobile money and uh, you put in our number. Our number is plus two five four plus two five four seven one one four four three four five nine. That's a number you're sending money to, and uh, then you go ahead and put the amount of money that you're sending, and uh, you just follow the prompts, and you'll be able to do that. And uh, so, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for giving. Thank you for uh, just being so supportive to the work of uh, this ministry. Allow me to pray for you and bless you, and then we'll be able to move on uh, from there. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the giving of your people. I pray that you bless them today. You minister to them by your Holy Spirit. I pray that God Almighty, you would stretch forth your hand upon them and cause them to know the favor, the grace, and the goodness of God. And especially in the times that we are living in, I'm praying for those that are of the household of faith, that God, you bless them. You would cause them to be men and women of influence, men and women that touch and inspire and impact our world. I pray that they'll be the people that are sought out for wisdom, for advice, for direction, for business skills, and acumen. I pray, Jesus, that you may cause um, in the seven hills of society, that you may cause the people that are called by your name to impact, to influence, and to make a difference in our generation. And so would you raise them? Would you bless them? Would you increase them? And as a church, I pray that God, you continue to provide for our needs and to help us to minister and to do ministry the way that you desire. We love you, Lord, and we do trust you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so uh, just having uh, led us into a time of giving, I'd like us to uh, go ahead and get into the word of God today. And uh, in, uh, I'll, I'll tell you how that goes uh, in just a moment, because th this is going to be very, very creative. Allow me to say it's a new month, the month of April. May the Lord bless you even as you join in in the word of God. And so let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. As we get into the sermon here, for today and uh, as i said th this is this is creative 
Uh, we are doing it a little bit differently. I'll not be preaching throughout. I'd like you to hear from four people. And um, uh, actually three people. Let's, let's cut out one. I'd like us to hear from three people. And uh, these are three. Uh, will be sharing with us their experiences, what has gone on in their lives, how they have ended up where they are at, uh, so that we may uh, learn some key lessons from them. And um, b Because one of the things that I've been doing is uh, just thinking about the church. What's the church all about? What are we supposed to be about? You know, Is it having great services and people enjoy and are excited about what is going on? Or is it to be able to bring transformation and change in society? Because um, really, that, that's what we're supposed to. Jesus, uh, before he ascended up to heaven, uh, the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew uh, chapter 28, he called the ga and, and gathered together the disciples and he told them, go ye therefore unto the whole world and make disciples. That, that was what they were supposed to do. And uh, we do not see an instruction. Uh, for us to necessarily go and uh, do the best service and have the most exciting worship experiences because it's never about us. Church was never meant to be about us. It's supposed to be about God. Um, the coming together for us is for encouragement so that we may continue to impact and inspire and to touch our world. And uh, there's something that I'm saying to us today that there is no one who is out of the reach of God's hand and there is no one that God cannot work in or transform or change. It doesn't matter how they look like um, because in, in this day and age uh, you find that uh, sometimes people look down on themselves and they think I, I, I can't amount to much. I don't even think that God can forgive me. I don't know whether God can love me because we look at ourselves and we think we have messed up, we have failed, we, we, we cannot be able to uh, do much and uh, at, the bo uh, at this body of Christ at ICC Mombasa we celebrate uh, some life transformation stories and I'd like to bring those to us because this is what church is all about. There's a city we are supposed to impact and inspire and just see people transformed and not just a city but a world and so listen to this. This is a story from uh, a young lady. Her name is Faith and uh, and uh, faith, uh, you know, born and brought up uh, in, in church. In, in fact, she says that uh, she feels as though she literally grew up in church. But then her life didn't go the way you would expect. And uh, just, just listen to this and you will know that indeed there is no one who is out of the reach of God's grace and touch. And so here is her story up on the screen. Um, let's watch this. Hi, my name is Faith Karigithi, um, the last born in a family of five, and uh, this is a story of my salvation, how I got to give my life to Christ. So I grew up in a Christian home. Um, my parents were basically a God-fearing couple, and so this is how they raised us. And um, things were not always perfect, but they were great, what one could ever ask for. And um, for the longest time, I, I, I felt like uh, we were in church every time the doors would open because <laughs> we were involved in a lot of uh, ministry in that church. So I was in the Sunday school. Uh, cadet, the church choir, the youth ministry, and this continued and by the time I was in my upper primary, I knew what it meant to be, to, to give your life to Christ. So I continued with ministry uh, at uh, the particular church, um, but I've always been a person who craved for acceptance from people and this was quite important to me uh, during a very young age and so I struggled with this for a very long time so I completed my A level and joined the uh, university where the party scene was you know um, basically the, the end thing and uh, popularity became a must-have for me so 
I parted very, very, very hard. If you would look up binge drinking, I was probably binge drinking. And I, at the time it was all that I, I wanted to do. So, I, at the back of my mind, I knew it was wrong. I knew it was, I was, I was sinning. But the desire to stop was, was not there. But rather, I kept on drinking and partying and getting involved in all this madness. As I say, the desire to pursue God wasn't there at all. And deep inside I knew I was sinning, but I wasn't working with God. So this continued for several years and into my adult life. Um, where things really, you know, became worse and I was in for a rude awakening. And I mean, you know, once you get employed and you have your own, you know, you have things going for you, you have a good career, you have a good salary, you know, a life that I, I dreamt of. You know, independent. I was independent. That is what I I loved about that life. Independent, drinking whenever I wanted and going out and at some point I even tried smoking. It was it was quite something. So as as that kept on, you know, going on and getting involved with friends that you know really knew how to party and drink um i still had an emptiness in my heart that i thought you know getting involved with with such activities would feel but it didn't the emptiness didn't go away dating guys didn't feel it Drinking alcohol did not, um, money did not do it either. So, but the one thing that really kept me going, I would say, is um, that phone call from my parents. And it, it's almost as if um, they knew what I was track or what I was going through, because they would always uh, send me a, a Bible verse to read and I would stay online as they prayed for me. So that's, that phone call would somehow numb the pain for me at that particular time. So things continued in this way for a while until it became worse. I, I became responsible. I lost my job. The time that I would go to work, uh, I wouldn't report to work. I would create some lame excuse because I was out drinking and not presentable. And it finally caught up with me. So it's, it's not a... Drinking is not everything. Drinking messes people's lives. And one would say that, oh, you, you need to get your life together. You need to know how much you, you, you ought to drink. But, kuna kashetani. Kuna kashetani akadwangi limit. Yes. So, that's the story of my life. I lost some relationships that I held so dear. And I remember yelling at God, why, why he'd let such a thing happen to me and why he wasn't able to fix it. I was bitter for the longest time. So the next thing, I moved back to my parents' home in shock, utter shock at just how life, my life had dramatically changed. It was it was terrible. <laughs> so 
I remember my sister would encourage me to to go with her to church. Um because I didn't have that desire to go to church and so my parents were like if you're going to stay in this house Sunday is church church day so you have to go to church you either go with us or you go with your sister so I had I had no option but to to join my sister who goes to ICC Mombasa it was uncomfortable for me I I didn't want to come to terms with my mistakes with my past I, I just felt safe in dwelling in, in, in the darkness so to speak but in retrospect God was so patient with me so it reached a time uh, my sister would pester me <laughs> pester me to join this class uh, at ICC and eventually I, I gave it a try you know just to get her off my back <laughs> sorry joking so um, the class is called anchor and again it was so uncomfortable in this class the first few weeks because what anchor does is uh, it helps helps you to re-examine your life holistically physically emotionally financially spiritually every aspect of your life and that was quite hard so things turned around on on the eighth week so there's, there's this uh exercise we we do before each class and that is memorizing scripture and the eighth week we, it spoke um, the memory verse was from Galatians 2:20. It says, "I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I that lives, but Christ living in me. The life which I live in the flesh, I live by faith. The faith which is in the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself up for me." Those words resonated so hard with me that. Christ can live in my heart and make things new. I was curious about that. And that's when I I had I had a voice and I knew it was God saying that are you ready to give it all up? Are you ready to follow me? And that's why by, by the end of the of the anchor class when pastor asked me before he baptized me what do you have to say and i say that i am ready to take up my cross and follow jesus and that is what i did so when i when i was uh memorizing the scripture and god was speaking to me i remember i was in my bedroom in my bed and tears just started flowing down my cheeks i was weeping and trembling but i also remember i was happy happy that i was free i, I don't know whether you can, i can explain that feeling and I, I had never never experienced such a feeling before i was free the emptiness was gone so by the time i was waking up in the morning i it, it, it was almost as if i was living in a dark room and suddenly someone has switched on the lights that is that is how i knew that god is real and god god was patient with me he was And I'll never ever exchange such a feeling for anything else in this world. What what I can say about my salvation story is that I have learned to be patient, to be keen, 
and to be silent to hear what god is speaking to my life because i i knew that god speaks i would hear people say that god speak spoke to me i mean how but god does speak and every time you go into prayer it is not a monologue but rather a dialogue so if you're watching this just know that god is alive and active and that he is able to redeem any situation that you feel that is unredeemable the desire to drink uh didn't just vanish but what I can say I knew from the time I said yes to Christ that I had to make some drastic changes in my life and that involved um you know parting ways with some friends that would tempt me to that old lifestyle and apart from that I got involved in bible studies groups um mission groups to basically build a relationship with Christ and i'm not saying it's easy but god promises that we are overcomers because he overcame the world jesus is everything to me he is my salvation he is my father he he is my restorer he I don't know if there, there are enough words to explain to explain who Jesus is but he came and made things new in my life and I always look forward to having a communion with God because that is the only place I feel safe it's the only place I feel accepted and loved cuz hey I had a problem of that craving to accept to be accepted by people but Jesus came and filled that and he's he's closer than than anything Wow. That's that's an amazing story. God changes lives. God picks up people that have messed up, that uh, have sinned, that look down on themselves and they think, uh, you know, I am done. And and it just begins to transform. And I can tell you this, I've watched Faith and I can tell you how life is different. God has done an amazing work in her life. And I have a story in the Bible and we'll read that right at the end uh, because it's just a story that amazes me and I'd like us to conclude our time together from that basis. But we cannot conclude because we have another story. Uh, This gentleman by the name of Fred um, that uh, we've interacted for a while now came to church and uh, I can tell you this, it didn't look like church. uh, You you would not have expected somebody like him to be in church. And he came to church and uh, his life has never been uh, the same again. And so uh, would you go ahead and just watch this and uh, I'll be back. Majina naitwa Fred Jam Steven uh, na fanya logistics hapa Mombasa. Yeah. I mean, Things that uh, influenced me to become the person I am today is that uh, me being the first one of three and uh, having a single mom these are the things that made me to step up and do and be all that I wanted to be all that my parents, my siblings 
uh, wanted. I what is that? What is there is that I get to be their dad. I get to provide for them, and in all doing that, made me step up early. That is when I was still in high school, and even doing all that, what happened is by that time I was using drugs and uh, surely using drugs smoking bang while in high school well I thank God because that lasted for about a year and we used to believe that I used to believe uh, having having uh, gone to school in Western that uh, ile bangi natoka kwa kaburi uh, ile ndo inashika so these are things that I did and by God's grace bangi niliwachana nayo uh, I smoked bang for like uh, se- from two second term to from three second term nikaachana na bangi uh, what made me strong is one day I was <coughs> I was prompt by after coming from school, those so strikes and everything, and then we are at uh, we are arrived at uh, Kisumu States, and then we went to a friend's place, and then we were all these people, the others coming from Mombasa, Nairobi, Namin, Lukona, to Kisumu at that time, but I used to come to Mombasa. What happened is. Niliambiwa ati ah huyo ni mwoga na nipigwa kwa wazazi nyumbani so siezi vuta bangi so nilivuta bangi vizuri and then what what came after is that i walked drinking water by that time they are used to uh, in Kisumu they used to sell uh, water in paper bags 2 shillings I remember I took water for uh, I, like two jugs and I was still thirsty. My mouth was still dry and it led me to go to uh, there was this chick that I used to try and uh, flows myself around her and yeah after what happened is I got an accident because I rode my bike. I took my bike and rode it there, and that is where I got this. After that, because I fell down, and that is when I decided and say this has to stop. So that point, you were high. Uh, you were under the influence of the drug, and so and that's you realized that it can cause you trouble. Yeah, at that point. Uh, yeah, I can say in a way, Fred was that guy uh, organized, according to me. Uh, I was, according to other people, because uh, this this is one thing. Uh, affirmation from others other people and after high school what happened is I got to start working these jobs and they used to pay very well and because of that they used to take care of my mom used to take care of my siblings pay for their tuition fees because they are going to government school and my drinking still still drinking by then and I mean you had one yes so I had drink I was being paid this world and I was blessed I was blessed with this uh, tongue of convincing people to buy products uh, the things that I used to do the promotions I used to do by then I remember there's a time uh, we went to Eldoret Kitale and we were being paid 
uh, good money per DMs because we are out of Kisumu. And what used to happen is in the evening, we used to go get full chicken for two people. And what could happen after that, you have finished everything. You, I believe before you take alcohol, you have to eat really well. And I never used to get. I believe I never used to get drunk because of eating really well. So after that, we will go and get. Uh, my brands were Richard, Viceroy. I mean, I knew it's one seven. So we will take at least half and divide it between the two of us, and then just do a touch. And then now you can go to the beers now. And my brand of the beer is Tasca. Yes. And after that, I remember. I remember one thing. Is We drank, we took alcohol in good quantity, and then we went to our rooms and we had this lovely and we were to actually I was still to, I was still fighting whether is this a life I want or this life is not meant for me. So I didn't pick this lady. My friend picked the lady and I remember my friend was drunk and he was to sleep with this lady and then in even before him trying to do anything he will be passed out. So I was there with the lady. Yeah. I mean, I'd say I had a good time. Still, somebody we didn't know, just picked up by the streets. Yeah, and because she was there offering herself, and we were there, we would also offer what she wanted that is, money. <coughs> Yeah, and by then I didn't I didn't care because I had nobody to to answer to. I had nobody to ask me questions. But I felt guilty because for me why I felt guilty is that this is what this was not somebody that had, this was not somebody that I wanted for myself. So, yeah, and assuming this is the life that I used to live, this is the life just sleeping around. I would know somebody within two days, and that person would be in the bed because my house. I was, I was that guy on the block. My house used to have everything. By then, the offers was everything. Because uh, I had this feeling in me, this is not life that I'm meant to live. So I live into pursue more, I live trying to do more for my life and be the best person because now my siblings are looking up to me and I used to think if even reason to myself 
am I the kind of person that my brother and my sister would say this is the person I want to be when I grow up or somebody's son would say this is the person I want to be when I grow up and I believe slowly and slowly I was, my life was being changed and my life was being transformed Me coming to ICC Mombasa is because uh, I want this, this relationship, personal relationship and uh, I had moved from churches to churches so one day uh, because I used to go of my work I used to go to the bank and pay taxes and this this lady that I got to know and she invited me and for me like one intentions and in she invited me and I remember I felt in love with the word I felt in, in love with the church, the people around and I remember after that same place that I've been sitting that I used to I sat that particular day is the same place and she invited me and I tried I tried everything to get this lady and I mean she was like oh, no, I don't know and I'm a person I I always tell myself I'm a person with principles and when when somebody tells me some things I get to be stay away because I don't want to be the cause of breaking a relationship so I stepped away and I let her go uh, I still used to come to church I have never missed coming to ICC because I really love ICC and uh, I was invited uh, she invited me also for a seat too. Uh, this is a caring community, and uh, you get to talk to each other, you get to share everything that happens uh, in your personal lives, and you get to pray for each other. And then I was also invited to do this program called uh, Anchor, and Anchor is uh, it's a manual that uh, you get to do within 10 weeks and uh, yeah 10 weeks and it talks about your health it talks about your finance it talks about everything in life that that goes on to individuals life and in general so I did it and I would say still by then because I used not to look at myself that I've attained all. I was still, I still wanted more. Wanting more for me was because I, 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 I felt in love with the word uh, that was being given to church. Uh, I used to be the person that I don't read the Bible and I have the Bible at home. And I wanted to experience God more. And that is what her quarter means by, uh, I mean by more. And through all that God God has been with me in, in every trials, in everything that I've come to go over again is my belief is that 
in 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 our lives who are living god never takes you out of situations but he gets to be with you throughout all that situation and i believe everything that i've been going through some I'll say bad some I'll say was some I'll say good but I believe God has been with me and he hasn't left me. I've done bad things I've done good things and because I believe he's with me I told you I would say sijafika sijafika but in my work I believe Mungu hapo na mimi even if I take a bad route I believe God is with me and even me walking through that you can call it around God is able to walk with me through through it and guide me to do the right thing even if it's that even if it is a wrong turn that I've taken what I see in the days coming in the days ahead is that I know people are calling me pastor and I don't know what what God has in store for me and I believe I believe he has good he has abundant good in store for me Jesus Christ me Jesus Christ me is a father Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ to me is a brother. Jesus Christ to me is a sister. Uh, as in, I'll say a sister because in everybody that I come across, be it a lady, be it a gentleman, I get to. My desire is to see Jesus first in them, so that I don't get to. I don't get to judge them but see the good first and by me seeing the good in them first I get to. it's one way of talking to someone and reaching out to them about Christ yes Jesus is my Lord and Savior I trust in the channel of the world. I have one more story. One more story for us. Um, Anderson Gashahi. Um, he's a businessman in the city of Mombasa. Um, he's aggressive. The guy is so driven and wants to make money. Uh, but um, he's also very passionate about God and uh, serving and being involved in the things of God. He's one of those people that I know I can call uh, and just give an assignment and he will leave everything uh, so that he may do it. Uh, he loves God with his heart. I've seen God change him. I've seen God change his family, change his wife. And uh, I celebrate this young man. And uh, one time we were talking and uh, I, I, I asked him about his friends and uh, he told me, you know, Pastor, I have no friends. All my friends used to be Wakachupa friends, you know. And uh, if you're wondering what that means, you know, is all of my friends used to be my drinking buddies. But now my life is different and uh, I'm glad God has given him friends and just built him. He has a new life. And so would you go ahead and uh, just watch this and uh, we'll bring our service to a close for today.
Hi, my name is Andy. That is Anderson Pecha Hikaruki, and this is my story of how I came to know Christ and walk with Him. Um, born and bred in Nairobi, uh, last born of four. Uh, family that we were Catholics, so I grew up uh, seeing my dad uh, drink oftenly, like every day. So I kind of like grew up into that kind of uh, social can I say knowledge or no? And even when I was, when I was growing up, uh, I adopted that kind of life uh, as young as maybe 18, 19. So when I finished my sc high school around 2000, 2001, I did my college in Nairobi, then I moved to Mombasa, where I was uh, an attache at uh, Kenya Ports Authority then. And uh, being an attache, then I had my seniors who uh, also, as you know, they had a lot of money and uh, they were drinking then. So they used to take me out for parties and uh, they could foot a bill any time. Go out to Bob's. Uh, Bella Vista and all that. So drinking became a social norm in my life. Um, just a bit later, I ended up uh, being employed. So I could now afford my own drink. Sadly, so I, I continued with that kind of life. Uh, it went on until about... Um, 2012, 2012 there, when uh, I was just going to work Friday, Kawaida, you go out, you drink, Saturday, go out, you drink, then Sunday, you sleep in all day, watch movies, and you must hang over. That will be my life for quite a long time. So one day, I had a lady friend who I was pursuing and uh, funny thing is she told me if I was serious and I needed to you know to have a relationship with her I was to go to church and she told me that she goes to church in a place called ICC Mombasa so I was like ICC Mombasa now what is this ICC Mombasa and uh, she insisted if, if we were to have a relationship or just have anything, even if he's, he's dating or even a conversation. I used then not to go to church. So she told me, I'll take you to church and then you see how my church is. And then from there, uh, maybe I can take you seriously. So I was like, uh, okay, fine. Next Sunday, do this, come pick me up and go to church because I needed the girl. So she came. Uh, on Sunday at around uh, 9 that time I had a nasty hangover because I've just come out from shooting pool and drinking and she picked me up and we went to church uh, so I sat at the back of this church and uh, sadly that time I don't know I can say sadly or coincidentally the sermon that day was about drinking and how um, there's this pastor who's talking in like a loud voice saying the way the wine will bite you like a viper it will make you see strange things and all that I was like I this guy so at the end of the service they had a an announcement on, on this thing they do it's a course called Anchor so I had to sign up for that course. Uh, I signed up for that course because remember I needed the girl. So I was pursuing the girl and the girl gave me a condition that I had to go to, to 
a church, ICC Mombasa. So after taking this 10 week uh, course, I began to see how my life was and how the Lord would have me live my life as, as totally different different scenarios because you would be you know have a session on um, on stewardship on how you can be a steward a good steward finances even health on how God um, wants us to live healthy lives you know dieting and, and, and all that uh, marriage uh, basically all areas of our lives God is interested in how we live our lives and, and, and we are accountable to him in how we live our lives so at the end of this 10 week program I got baptized and I gave my life to Christ because I had given my life to Christ but it was the on and off kind of like you know I could just drink a little and all that so um After that, I started attending church um, like uh, seriously and uh, consistently. And uh, it being a, a good Bible-based church, I started now learning the ways of God and, and, and now the Holy Spirit was ministering to my life. And I found myself changing. He, he changed me because um, I just sat down and I realized I I spent like a year without even drinking and, and I, I wasn't craving for that drink and, and, and I wasn't into into the social norms that I used to do. I'd find myself sleeping early on Saturday because I need to be in church on Sunday morning. Um, eventually I I started joining uh, ministries where you you get to now see God move in different ways. Uh, it was still weird to me because I, I used to back then see church people and I, I used to find them weird and what they do. Seeing myself now do the same things, uh, the transformation I mean that God was doing in my life. Uh, it was quite a struggle, but 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 uh, you know he, he walked me through the changes. For example, business. Uh, as you know, we, we love cutting corners for us to make money. And here you are. You told um, this is a kingdom business. You're supposed to do things, uh, you know, in a godly way. No bribes. Uh, it, it was just to me it was a struggle but but the Lord uh, but the Lord uh, pulled me through it another thing uh, I found out is that immediately I stopped drinking all my friends <laughs> ran away from me I used to call them my kachupa friends uh, and, and uh, funny enough God brought me uh, new friends born again in church um the way i used to treat uh, I, I i got married some some times later because um, this church that i was going to uh you know we have a way of thinking that uh, this come we stay you know you have a girlfriend you live together you have a kid and then you call yourself married then one day pastor called me told me and my wife that uh, you know you two are sinning because you're not married so you come to find out a lot of things that the world says it's okay it's really not okay with God so you come to know God's ways you come to read God's word you come to to surrender your ways to him to to live a life that he's called you to live uh, Eventually, you come to know that actually, um, 
it is he who has called you to a life that he has destined for you like his will upon your life and uh, most of the times we end up walking our own ways and doing our own things and we miss out on, on God's God's will upon our lives and we're very quick to go to God and, and, and complain and say that uh, things are not working out so a lot of things used to happen the way I wanted them to happen maybe in my marriage um, you know my wife would you know uh, do something that I was not happy about and then you find yourself you say ah, sit in the church that day you know you 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 stop going to church you you stop being you know that that guy that the Lord had transformed then you go back to drinking you fall back but interestingly um, the Lord used to bring me back to to the path that he had set before so now if you ask me the last time I quarreled with my wife I would say I can't remember because uh, as a priest of my home you come to learn that you're supposed to love your wife as Christ loved the church and how did Christ love the church he died for the church so I'm here sitting and thinking I'm supposed to do everything that I can for this lady uh, does it mean that when I wrong the Lord you know just walks out on me no he still loves me and cares for me and he, you know his mercies are still on me so I will come to learn to you know to persevere to be humble to you know to love in all seasons it's a struggle because you're torn apart uh, between how you feel and what you should do in business you end up losing a lot of business because at times you you refuse to cut corners and uh, and, and those guys just won't have you, you know, doing things the way you, you ought to. Friendships, like I said, you end up losing a lot of friends, yes, but um, it is worth it. It is worth it to, to walk a righteous life. It's a struggle. It is a struggle, but it is worth it is worth it because uh, like my business I've seen it grow since um, I've learned to tithe you know, the gifts of uh, I came to learn there's fast fruits there's tithe and there's offering I know <laughs> so when when you do things God's way then God will take care of everything because uh, it's, it's then that you come to learn that you seek ye first the kingdom of God, which really now manifests in you. I also came to learn something that is uh, a bit interesting because a long time I used to think God needs my money. It's, it's you know, I have to work and to tithe, so the church is, is dependent upon you know what we give and, 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 and what we do. But there was one day that there was a sermon, God spoke to me and, and the pastor preached and he was like, God does not need us. God does not need our money. He is God. Even 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 when you 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 choose not to, to listen to him, to obey him, you know, to walk in his ways, he will still be God. And that was a wake up call to me that day, I remember. So I sat down and thought, I if I don't give like my 10%, I mean, church will still run. God will still be God, things will still work. If I refuse to, you know, walk a righteous life and, 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 and in his ways and walk in obedience, it doesn't make him a lesser God than he is. So in essence, what I'm saying is, is us who need him. And it is in our own benefit to walk in his ways. 
and truly when you come to think that way you end up now coming to a place where you walk in awe of, of, of God because uh, this generation of ours what we are lacking is the fear of God in us that's why we do whatever we, we want to do however we want to do and, and um, it's wrong it's wrong um, another thing is uh, in my work with God uh, I've come to learn about Uh, what we see, what we see, what we hear, what we do, what we touch. We should be able to be careful with 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 ourselves, with with everything that uh, that we do. For example, you sit in the house like a whole day and you're watching movies. And one day, I remember there was a someone a pastor preached. You can do eight hours of a series and you can't even sit thirty minutes. And read the word of God, and 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 it really challenged me because he was talking about altars we are building, and 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 idols that we are worshiping, not knowing that uh, the things we do and we set before God is an idol. So I've come to learn a lot in my work with Christ. It's, it's been a struggle, and. Um, it's better struggling and doing the things of God than, you know, just being comfortable and, and, and doing the things of the world. And I've come to learn that. Um, another struggle I've had is my family. As I said, uh, they are Catholics. We are Catholics. Okay, we were Catholics. And uh, I keep calling them at times and you know I speak of you know maybe I send a verse and I speak of what the Lord is saying and, and, and I rebuke them and, and they have these cultures and, and you know Catholics you know, they used to call us uh, Kanisas the Korkaruka mm-hmm. you know, Church of Morokarovo the Holy Coast Field Churches but slowly by slowly I I've tried to speak to my family, my dad, my mom, and uh, my brothers, sisters. And I'm still trying to to get God to move in their lives because it's not easy to be born again. I would just like to call, make a make a call to anyone who's there. If if you go to church and you're born again, please invite somebody to church. Be a difference in someone else's life. Try to try to you know sit back and recall how you know God has brought you from where you are to where you are, what you know. You're supposed to live a transformative life like you transform what you know to other people invite somebody to church if i wasn't invited to church i would still be that person who used to drink and party uh i'm not saying i live a righteous life i'm still struggling because the enemy is out there to you know to bring you down every time you're trying to walk a righteous life but god's grace is always sufficient and I thank God I would not trade whatever I am with anything else because the Lord is still working in me and through me and uh, He's faithful to complete what He started, the word says, and I trust Him. He's my Lord, He's my Savior. He's the rock in which I stand, you know, upon stumbling ground. Bible says that it's the rock on which you stand and I need all these uh, crises and pandemics you're going through he's our source of refuge so to me I'd say he's, he's everything he's, he's everything to me I would try to think of me dying for you know my wife you know 
however much I love I love and cherish her, it, it, it will still take a lot. And he, you know, he came down, he became man, and he died for my sins. He left the comfort of his glory. So when you come to think about that, I think he's my all in all. That is how I can put it. He says he's my all in all. You've listened to the three testimonies, Fred, Anderson, and Faith. And um, as I sit uh, back just like you and I, I listen to these people, I listen to their stories, one of the things I am doing today is celebrating God's working. For sure, there is no one God cannot be able to change, cannot be able to transform and bring into his kingdom. There is no one that God cannot be able to touch and minister. And so you might be seated there and you're thinking, well, uh, you know, those are people God worked in. What, what about, let me tell you something. Even you, God can do an amazing work in your life. Now, in the book of uh, Luke chapter 17, uh, beginning reading from verse number 11, we read, we read this. And, and I'd like to just look at it and then we'll conclude. The Bible says, verse number 11, Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. It's talking about Jesus. And as he entered a certain village, there he met ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. Why did they stand afar off? Because they were lepers. Because lepers were supposed to self-quarantine. Allow me to use that word. They were supposed to stay away from people. They were not supposed to mix with everyone else. And uh, so they stood afar off. Uh, they, they need the master, but they are unclean. They are considered unclean. They, they cannot be able to mingle and interact with everyone else. And so they stood at afar off. And verse number 13 says, They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. Now even people who um, find themselves as outcasts, in society can be able to call on Jesus because there is no one who is outside the reach of God's grace. Whether that, uh, what has caused them to be outside, uh, to think of themselves as being outside of the reach of God's grace is sin, whether it be a sickness or disease, whatever it might be. M maybe it's even where you were brought up, how you were brought up. You know, you don't consider yourself uh, to be among the well-to-do. And so uh, you, you feel as though you don't measure up, you don't qualify. It doesn't matter who you are. If these lepers would cry out to Jesus, any one of us can do the same. We can cry out to Jesus. But the story doesn't end up there. Listen to this. As they cried out, um, verse number 14 says, So when he saw them, when Jesus saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And uh, th that phrase comes out of the Old Testament because when you are healed, you are supposed to go and show yourself to the priest and then they would be able to allow you back into society if they are certain you, was, uh, you, you are well. Um, and so Jesus is sending them to go and show themselves to the priests. And the Bible says, and uh, so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were made whole. As they went, they were healed. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he, he was healed, he returned and with a loud voice glorified God. He fell down on his face at the feet of Jesus and began to give him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. I love that. And that's where I, I want to stop for today. He was a Samaritan. So <laughs> why is that? important because Samaritans were considered to be outcasts by the Jews. They were uh, half-casts. And so because of that, they were outcasts. They were not supposed to mingle, interact uh, with the Jews. But because of the leprosy, these men had been um, among the group. You know, uh, they, they say they safety numbers. You know, it's, it's so easy for us to hang out together when we have problems. You know, people, people who have debt tend to give one another comfort. People who uh, are facing uh, one problem or another, they, they find comfort in being together. And so that's, that's what had happened here. But, uh, you know, when these men realized they had been healed, 
I don't know whether it's because either the, uh, uh, th there was some social distancing. They began to look at him and say to him, hey, you, you, you're, a, you're a Samaritan, we are Jews, and uh, uh, you cannot go with us. I don't know what happened, but uh, this man distanced himself. He separated himself from the rest, and he came back. And what did he come back to do? He came back to give God praise. He came back to give Jesus thanks. Now, the interesting thing for me is that uh, he was not a Jew. He was a Samaritan, but Jesus healed him. And remember, he was also leprous. That, that's like double jeopardy. He was in trouble twice, so to say, but he was still acceptable to Jesus Christ. And so wherever you are at, whatever is going on in your life, let me tell you something. Our Lord and Savior accepts anything, even those who are double outcasts. They're welcome to Jesus. We've seen the stories of men that God transformed and changed. And uh, today they, they are so different. Uh, th their stories appear as though they're just stories that they're giving. But it's because of the work that God has done in, the, in their lives. And God desires to do the same kind of work in your life. Whatever might be going on with you, you can trust God. Where you consider yourself a sinner, you don't think that you qualify to step into the purposes or in the will of God. You can. You can go. It's uh, no one is outside the reach of God's grace. Jesus loves us. The Bible says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life." You can trust in Him. You can hope in Him. You might be in trouble. You might. Uh, uh, I love the fact that uh, if you continue, Jesus told the man. Go, your faith has healed you. And the word used for healing is the same word used for salvation. The word sozo. A and so Jesus was telling him, go, your faith has saved you. Or go, your faith has healed you. And, and so uh, here's the thing. Every one of us on this planet needs healing because salvation is actually healing. We are healed of our sin. We are healed of our separation. We are healed of the things that uh, separate us from God and, and our relationship with God is healed. And so every one of us needs one form or another of healing, whether it be physical, whether it be spiritual, whether it be uh, just, just the healing of our finances, whatever it might be. And I invite you today to trust this Jesus who is able to change lives who is able to pick a drunk and transform their lives completely, who is able to pick somebody uh, who wasn't living right and change them for his kingdom purposes. He wants to do the same with you. He wants to change you and help you to live for his purposes, for his kingdom, for his will. And so I'd like to pray together with you, and then I'll give you the charge, just like Jesus told this man, and, and, and just tell you, hey, go. Your faith has healed you. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has transformed you. Be the child of God that God desires of you. Be encouraged even as we pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every person that has been listening to our service today and just following along. I pray that God, you may cause them to know that their lives indeed can be so transformed that they will live for you, they will walk with you, they will serve your purposes and they will never ever be the same again. I pray that God, any person who is not born again, you will draw them to yourself. You will cause them to know that Jesus, you're ready to forgive, to love and to show them your ways. As you're praying, I'd like to ask, are you there and you're not born again? Would you do, just go ahead and, and uh, right where you are, as a sign of faith, just raise up your hand and uh, let me pray together with you as you say, Jesus, I need you as my Lord and Savior. And so Jesus, every person lifting up their hand, I believe they're there. I pray that you would save them. I pray that you forgive them. I pray that you wash them with your blood and make them your child. Go ahead and do that, Lord. Change their lives. Give them your wisdom, your grace and ability and help them to live for you. If you believed, if you raised up your hand, I'd like you to let us know by sending us an inbox message or writing in the comment section. Just get in touch with us. You can even send us a, a message on our, uh, on our number that we gave you earlier on, 0711-443-459. Or you can send us uh, a, an email, info at iccmombasa.org. Let's get uh, to talk with you. Maybe you are watching this and you're born again. You're a Christian. You love God. You've been walking in God's ways. And you're wondering, how does this message apply to me? Listen to me. Here's how it applies to you. Even you, you need to stop looking down on yourself. Because if Jesus did not put away a Samaritan, did not put away a leper, but he was willing to accept them, and then he sent them forth uh, you know, to, to go testify of what God had done in their lives, you need to do the same. Live your life to testify of God's greatness, of God's goodness. Never ever limit yourself and think that you don't qualify, or you don't measure up, or you're not good enough. No, uh -uh. go and live your life for God. God bless you. 
have a beautiful time may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace may the lord answer your prayers lift you up and cause you to be world changers wherever you are may god empower you and anoint you for his kingdom purposes i bless you and i release you to walk in god's ways go and accomplish god's will because your faith has healed you your faith has saved you your faith has made a difference as you live for god's kingdom in jesus name Thank you.